Hello, my name is Billy Deason, and this is my project for 3050 analog circuits. I've designed a, an adjustable Q-notch filter. This is the circuit right here from the capacitors here over that way. And this is the schematic. I used a I used two LM74 or 741s. I've got two capacitors of 750 picofarads, one capacitor of 1500 picofarads. I've got a 1.8 mega ohm and two 3.6 mega ohms. I'm supplying this with a negative and a positive 15 volts. That's my supply to the two transistors. I've got it indicated here that I'm going to be supplying it with one volt peak at one kilohertz frequency, which with the calculations of the frequency and you picking a resistor, that sets the other capacitor so you basically have the capacitors and resistors together suggesting to you where the Q is going to be in your frequency and you should supply a frequency to adjust properly. So this is the AC analysis at different uh, the other device that I've included is a 50 kilo ohm potentiometer and by adjusting that value I can go from zero ohms in the potentiometer as far as the circuits concerned that gives me the maximum peak to 100 percent of the 50 ohms and that as far as the circuits concerned and that gives me a straight line but you notice that the Q regardless of how tall the peak is remains at 63 and that Q point is the transition point in the phase to observe this action I've used the National Instruments Elvis board and wired it up to the circuit in the Bode plot manner. That gives me the ability. Now, I'm going to be turning the potentiometer. You'll notice that I have a digital multimeter measuring the ohms on it. Now I'll indicate, I'll tell you and let you see what values that I choose when I analyze this, but I'll be doing it manually due to the fact that I had created an Adreno circuit here so that I could use a touchpad and a stepper motor. I got that actually to work, but when connect once connecting the stepper motor to the potentiometer, I found out that the stepper motor did not have enough torque to turn the potentiometer, so I'll be doing that by hand. But you should be able to see, I'll leave this positioned here so that you'll be able to see the Elvis board on the screen. So I activated the National Instruments Bode plot. I set the start frequency 
I'm going to give you a better position. I set the start frequency at one at 10 hertz and ended it at 1000. because it was not necessary to go any higher as you see in the action for the peak of the cue and the transition phase happen between about 7 and 400 hertz so to go any further than 1k would be just a waste now bringing up the National Instrument Bode plot again and I have right now, I have the effective potentiometer resistance of the circuit set to as near zero as I can get it. Zero ohms. And this is what I got out of it. I'll run it again. I've got the steps set at 15. I've got the peak at 1 because that's the schematic one volt peak and I set the Y scale to go for auto now, I didn't want to do no more than 15 steps because that would take quite some time to complete but as you see The notches here indicate that 100, 90, 80, 70, 60, a little bit past 60 is as low as a point as I got. So that's pretty accurate because this is supposed to be 63 right there. And notice that it goes close to negative 8. Now that's going to change. The shape should not change that much and it should always transition around 63 Hertz. But negative 8 is where it's at when it's set to 0. So I'll change the resistor value. The effective seen by the circuit to 20 kilo ohms the machine has completely gone haywire Okay, I've turned it manually, which is why you couldn't see me moving it. But that's about as close to 20 as I can get. And I'm going to run this again. Now the purpose of a notch filter, of course, is to allow high and low bands of frequencies to pass but not to allow a certain bandwidth to pass.